Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Grim Report. Grim here. I know it's been, it's pretty late. This one's pretty late. No, not late, really. I don't, I don't do on the weekends. Or Fridays or Thursdays, just Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Batman's Gotham was Scott Snyder and Greg Palou. Batman's Gotham. After 75 plus years, Batman has accumulated more than his share of landmark creative teams. Bob Kane, Bill Finger, Jerry Robinson, and occasionally Greg Fox. Gardner Fox, and foundation for the likes of David B. Reed and Dick Spring, Spring, John Boner, Boomer, Broom, and Kane, Fentano, Danny O'Neill, and Neil Adams, Steve Egerhart, and Marshall Rogers, and Frank Miller, and David Mazuscio, I don't know his name. By the late 1980s, Batman comic books were becoming for a virtual cottage industry. Weaving storylines between Batman and Detective Comics and tag team artists like Don Newton, Gene Cullen, and, uh, well, the list just goes on. In the 90s, of course, everybody knows about the 90s, exploded with the spinoffs for various Bat associates, which were turn produced mega arcs. Design employed by them all in the anthologies Legends of Dark Knight and Batman Confidential. Occasionally, Outsiders, Revella, a miniseries of glory, and the villain level of Bat Productions went through the roof, although there were numerous standoff, standout creative teams. Yeah, there's a bunch of them that stand up. You know, really good. It's hard to any particular one of the don donate just the nineties but into the to, well into two thousands. That was the status in quo in two thousand ten when Scott Snyder was started pinning the adventures with Dick Grayson, Batman and Detective Comics. Writer Grant Morris alongside various artists have been shepherding one bat book. Or another since 2006. Eventually making Bruce Wayne into a globetrotter for Batman Incorporated. According while, accordingly, while Bruce Wayne was away, Snyder remained in Gotham along artist Jock Francesco Franciabelli and field detectives run with eerie and compelling tales. Ah, oh, me, my heart is watering for some reason. And the artist of Jock, okay, Compelling Tales of Next Generation Dark Knight in 2011, the new 52 relaunched, moved Morrison to action comics and Snyder to the main Bat book. He and penciler Greg Capello, Capello have made their own for most of the past five years. Okay. Five star review. Snyder, Chapello bid Batman the perfect farewell in issue 51. April's Batman, volume 2, 51, marked the only, not only the final issue for Snyder, Capello, but for the final issue for the only writer penciler team to remain in charge. Uncharged since not DC's 52, new 52. Relaunched in 2011, the notable term teams from the class of 2011 had left their series largely on the on their own terms whether they told single extended story like Morris and Rags Morales and action of or Wonder Woman's brand as zero or you know basically these guys just left on their own but uh yeah April this month's issue of Batman uh, was Snyder and Capello's last Batman. Poor guys. Well, it was kind of like a love letter to the Gotham, what it was like. The last issue, from what I'm seeing, kind of messed up, you know. 
But what are you going to do? You know, you really can't say, oh, it was horrible. I mean, a lot of people really liked them. I didn't read any of their comic books. I apologize for that. But, I mean, Batman, from what I hear, was going quite well for that period of time, for as long as they were doing it. So, yeah, good luck to those guys. And to you guys, I say, good luck. Good night. God bless.